It is day four of the Scotties Tournament of Hearts in Central Alberta. We are in Red Deer for draw nine this morning. Last year, they were the talk of the tournament, surprising everyone by taking home the bronze. But in Red Deer, it hasn't been smooth sailing for the Blue Nosers. Starting off 0-3, Heather smith Daisy's crew from Nova Scotia has a big hill to climb. Now finding themselves in an early must-win situation. It doesn't get any easier this morning as they face Jennifer Jones and the four-time champions from Manitoba. Draw nine from the Scotties is next. It has been a beautiful few days in Red Deer, Alberta. Picture perfect scene and the intensity starting to heat up. The 31st edition of the Scotties and that has been our home away from home. The and Max Century we bring you inside. Here's the action from last night. Team Canada, Amber Holland facing Team Manitoba. Perfect run back there in nine and it was handshakes soon after. A victory for Team Canada, 7-3, the final there. Nova Scotia starting off very rough, 0-3 oh, to begin this Scotties, but Heather smith AC starting to feel it a little bit. Nice little pick, remove that Yellowstone against British Columbia. She gets the victory, and as we see the standings, everyone has at least now one loss in a wide open field. BC, Team Canada at 4-1, Manitoba, Saskatchewan. We have a whole bunch of teams with two wins and everything's still up in the air. As we say hi once again, Brian Mudrick joined by Kathy Goche. And when you talk about clutch skips over the last few years, is anyone better than Jennifer Jones? Just to get out of Manitoba this year, five must-win games. She won them all. Now in high school math, 60%. We'll get you by. At this level, it's not going to cut it. Well, it isn't, and it hasn't cut it for Jennifer Jones in those two losses in the 60%. And it's really interesting because in those losses, her team shot 85, 90%. That means so goes Jennifer, so goes the team. She needs to start to play better herself. A lot of big things expected from Heather Smith AC and Nova Scotia. Last year, 7-4 and in Charlottetown. Last year, a bronze medal. But they struggled. 0-3 out of the gate. A little momentum now. Two straight wins. How do they keep it going? She simply needs to put the broom in the right spot. She is over-icing herself for hits, so rolling out a lot. And she is under-icing herself for draws. And maybe a little chat with her husband, Mark Dacey, for some advice. A little bit of support. Of course, he is a former Briar champ in his own right. A busy morning here at the Scotties in Red Deer as everyone pushes to make that final four. First rock coming up next, Nova Scotia, Manitoba. The 2012 Scotties Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Sponge Towels Paper Towels. Nothing absorbs like it. The 2012 Scotties Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by World Financial Group. Proud to be a sponsor of the Season of Champions. Your dreams, our strategies. By Tim Horton's new lattes made with premium espresso. And by Capital One. What's in your wallet? The NMAX Centrium, home of the Red Deer Rebels. They're on an eight-game road trip, but curling has taken over. And this morning, here's the matchups. PEI on sheet A facing Newfoundland and Labrador. New Brunswick will go up against Saskatchewan. Both teams three and two. Now, as you see, that is not Kerry Galusha. A lot of people under the weather at the Scotties. That is Sharon Cormier that will skip the Yukon Northwest Territories against Quebec. They'll actually go with three players because of illness. And our feature matchup, Nova Scotia and Manitoba on sheet D. And as mentioned, a bit of a flu bug going around, so they do the <laughs> gunpoint and the hellos. Uh, obviously, everybody just trying to stay healthy and play well. And it is time to meet the teams. It's brought to you by Ford Driveland. Hi, I'm Heather smith Dacey from Team Nova Scotia. Our lead is Terry Lake. Our second is Bliss Comstock. Our third is Danielle Parsons. And we curl out of the CFB Curling Club in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Hi, I'm Jennifer Jones, Skip from Team Manitoba. Our lead is Don Askin, our second is Jill Officer, third is Caitlin Laws, and we curl out of the St. Mattel Curling Club in Winnipeg.
And there's a look at the two skips that will go head to head in our feature matchup this morning. Nova Scotia with the Red Rocks, Manitoba throwing the Yellowstones. And it is Heather Smith Dacey with the hammer. So to begin action on this Tuesday morning as the games become more and more crucial when it comes to moving up the standings, lead for Team Manitoba, Don Askin. Now some great numbers from Don all week. Very, very consistent player. And talked a little bit about it in the opening, Brian. It's not been a challenge for the front end or the, the middle part of this team. And Jennifer's played brilliantly in three games. It's just been that in the games that she hasn't, it's not a little bit off. It's 60s off. And that's really unusual. 15. And there's the big discrepancy. You just saw the numbers from Dawn in third place and 13th. And so that really suggests that for Terry, some struggles early this week. That means she's either coming into the house with her guards or not getting them into the right position. And the setup needs to be done correctly or right away, Heather smith Daisy is in trouble. Okay. <laughs> and that's stone from Terry Lake settling on the button. Time for the game plan, Kathy. Well, for Heather Smith, Daisy needs to put the broom in a better spot. We talked about that. She's making great draws, but the broom's in the wrong spot. So their second shot, not first shot. She has great draw weight. She's made some great draws, but she's not been able to keep it. Seems to lose it and then hit the hack on an extra draw. Not going to fly for the rest of the week. Manitoba Park last night. That was a bit of a gong show, quite frankly. <laughs> and Jennifer is an offense machine. They play a lot of rocks, and they're comfortable with them. You need to stick to that. That's what got you to the show and got you that Maple Leaf before. Kathy's gong show game plan is brought to you by World Financial Group. Your dreams are strategies. It was a crazy, crazy night in here last night. Lots of people going down on stones and tripping on the ice and you know stationary stones peripheral vision is a huge part of curling for sweepers you need to know all the time where those stationary stones are and jill unfortunately with a closed stance did not see the rock and it was a stationary stone that she caught her foot on and went down but the team momentum just shifted like crazy at that point they only gave up two but it was enough corner this one guys yep hard line Hard line. Hard line. It's been hard to get this by. Just a rub. Well, we talked about last night and that fall by Jill. It looked like it was going to be a shot made by Jennifer. Team brushing. Watch the stationary stone on the left coming into play. That's what Jill does not see. The rock goes. Just a horrible break. And a bad fall for Jill as well. Gives up a steal of two, and of course, frustration. You just hate that. But it was only two, Brian. They still have lots of time to come back, but the momentum shift was huge. Real hard! Hard! Little run back, and they'll pick that one red stone out. Should have rolled almost. Good. That one from Jill Officer, and Jen? you heard some of the quotes from Jennifer Jen? Jones last night after, and obviously really disappointing, but her and Jill have played together for what nearly 20 years and she said there's no one I'd rather have sweeping my rocks and that's just a great support of your teammates because you win together you lose together and those things happen oh they do there is absolutely no way Jennifer's going to hold anything against Jill they work very very hard out there to sweep her stones on a regular basis and people fall things happen it's called sport. it was a tough night for the seconds all around you had Jillian Babin second for New Brunswick she took a tough tumble and then watching that same matchup with Team Canada, and it was kind of scary watching Tammy Schneider. It looked really innocent, but when it's your knee and you feel something pop or something's not right, that can be a really, really tough injury. Hopefully she's okay and can rebound today. Do you have all? I like here, I think. Okay. You have a little space? Yeah. Okay. With that little bit of a roll-off, it is open now for Jill and the Hack to make the double, get access at that shot stone. More great numbers from Jill. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. It's particularly whoa, impressive whoa. given the fact yeah. that Jill played virtually not at all this yeah. year, having a baby go. just three months ago. Thin little double, Sorry, can't Jill. remove that red stone. 
Still sitting back for Comstock will remove that yellow stone. Well, it's not fatal with Last Rock in this first end. Heather Smith Dacey wants to make sure that she's got okay. a shot. Better option than missing on the outside for sure, but it does give Jennifer access once again to the stone that was shot. Now, second shot with Caitlin. Last year, what a way to make your Scotty's debut as Caitlin yes. Laws joined this team. Made it all the way to the final. And back here once again as Team Manitoba. You know, we talked about the spill last night for Jill Officer, and I had a lot of people ask me the question and wondering with the stats and you talk about percentages, how is it scored when someone actually burns your rock? That's a zero. It's not a throw through that you don't get scored on because Jennifer threw the stone. It would be very similar to if your running stone picks up debris and crashes into the boards. As soon as you throw it, that stone is scored out of four. So unfortunately for Jennifer, that would have been a zero and that wouldn't have helped her stats at all for sure. But that was only just one shot. Gets that roll, which is quite nice. Becomes second shot now, something for Jennifer to be concerned about. talk the so. two options one is that you pick it and make it go away you may lose the stone right behind it but that's not the end of the world the other option that Jennifer toyed with briefly was throwing the guard on top of it and putting some pressure on Heather Smith Dacey in this first end but what we have seen this week is guards are really hard to place well because of the watch big finish the on this ice just watch the back I'm just trying to miss the back that a girl good <laughs> good that a girl Daniel okay. Parsons, nice. the little hit and flip. Good throws, Daniel. Good shot. Anyway, for more than a 10, so I. Uh... It is shot, so forces Jennifer to play the removal. Again? Just a 10. See that hair there? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it came off my rock. Pretty impressive considering that two of those games are in the 60s. It's you an overall cumulative really average, so a couple of 60s can really hurt your average. Is still second among skips. This stone lands in our feature game, the hit and stick, and you'll see Manitoba lying two over on sheet A. There's a look at PEI in Newfoundland and Labrador. I know it's early in the game here still, Kath. You know, and I say the game, I mean the week when it comes to the Scotties, but at one and four, Newfoundland and Labrador, and Heather Strong really in a must-win situation here. She's trying to run that guard back and pick off that red shot stone. Can it spill enough? Not quite. So it is one there for PEI.
And another great story from the island is Kim Dolan back for another crack here at the Scotties. A great veteran of the game and has dedicated basically her entire life to sports. She was fantastic as the chairperson last year for us at the Scotties. You saw Heather's number 66, and I can remember two shots last night where had she put the broom in the right spot on her free draws or her open draws for two, nice shot. She would have been given four. She made great draws, had great draw weight, but they were second shot because did not allow enough ice. Well thrown rock, very good at the up weight. Just icing herself a little bit too much. She throws it harder than the rest of her teammates and tends to pop the stones a little bit, which means sets them back so they will run a lot straighter. Thanks, Caitlin. Good start. Yeah, both of mine curled. I know who that guy in the background is cheering for, that Jets logo. A little more weight. Pretty brave in Oiler and Flame Country, but. I thought we were rolling way over. I'm like, I don't think we want to. And so from a whole bunch of rocks in play here in the first end, comes down to a relatively simple shots. shot. I wanted to roll to the wing. Oh. Good shot. Yeah. Thanks. Nine and a half. Uh, nine three. Yeah. That's still a really Yeah, it moved. I thought we were going to roll to the wing. Wing, yeah. yeah. She didn't throw that first one very good. Stone here in one for Heather Smith Dacey out of Nova Scotia playing for the blank. Unfortunately, she'll hit and stick around, so the single is hers. And now Manitoba has hammer back when we return to Red Deer right after this. Team New Brunswick comes in on this Tuesday morning with a 3-2 and two record. A change in the lineup for them this year as Andrea Kelly, longtime skip, still throwing the four stones for New Brunswick. And her final stone, looking for a pair in one. Well, she's got one already, Brian. She just wants to touch her stone. That's the one on the right-hand side in the forefoot. Just a little bit. That would give her enough for second shot. See Rebecca Atkinson, who holds the broom down, throws third stones. The solo Babin on the brush, little tap. What a shot, nice. very nicely done. Nice touch. Two for Andrea Kelly, as she gets it done for her team, New Brunswick up 2-0 after one. And back in our feature matchup between Nova Scotia and Manitoba, Heather smith Dacey trying for the blank in one. She would hit and stick around, so a 1-0 advantage for Nova Scotia as Manitoba has the hammer back here in two. First stone thrown by Terry Lake is that long guard. Manitoba's Dawn Askin came around it. And then the third stone thrown in this end. Just tapped the shot stone back and out of play. Clean, quiet. Yeah, just clean. Yeah, a little quiet. quiet. Okay, then yes. hard. Yes. Hard. Dawn Askin got engaged on Boxing Day this okay, year to longtime boyfriend nice Mike McEwen, a gentleman that many thought would represent Manitoba this year. Had such a great, great season on the slam. And there is an updated score. It is Yukon Northwest Territories with a one nothing advantage over Quebec. Now, they've had some problems when it comes to sickness. Actually, it's Sharon Cormier who is skipping right now. Carrie Galusha out for this game. Actually playing with just three yes. players. They were trying for the blank there. Sharon did hit and stick around. So it is one nothing there after one. Anything? Stay with it, Danielle. Stay with it. Okay, that's fine. Too much ice. Bless, it was a nice throw. Fully. We saw Sasha Carter sit out yesterday, both games because of illness. Kelly Scott not feeling well at all last night. Every time that there was an opportunity, she would sit on the bumper, played really well. But it is definitely going through. These teams spend a lot of time together. It's very much like an Olympic camp where you are in each other's face all the time. You're sharing 
lockers. They have a red locker and a yellow locker, and you go into that room of the rocks that you are throwing that game. But there is a lot of proximity to each other, and a lot of these viruses spread really, really easily. Nicely buried. Almost comes out the other side just that little bit. Little left. Huh? Leave it. Whoa. Yep. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just half. Okay. Just let it work. Enough to get it out. Oh. Yep. Leave it. You can go on it if you need weight. Nope. Okay, okay, go then. Right through. Go, 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 go. Very nice throw. Nice throw, Bliss. Team Nova Scotia coming to play, very much demonstrating that early this morning. Kathy Jennifer Jones may be Team Manitoba, but make no mistake, four-time champ, definitely a target on her back every time she's in the competition. Whoa. When you competed, obviously oh, no, you were right always one of the good teams as well, but did you right get up for certain yeah, games? Yeah. I mean, a lot of athletes like to say, well, it's the games today or it's the next game in the schedule, but were there certain teams you really got up for? Nice double right there. For sure, there's no question about it that every team comes into this. And while you know that you have to play really well against every team, there are always provinces or specific teams that you have gone head to head with on the Cashfield circuit or that you've played over the years that you know are going to be really tough. Last night, they showed in a feature about Jennifer that almost half of the times that she has played at a national Scotties, it's been as Team Canada. You have to know that when you play, Jennifer, whether she's Team Canada or Team Manitoba, you're going to get a really good game. You need to play well. For Nova Scotia, just really want to keep that momentum going. Well, now that stone is behind the T-line, and so even though it's a good throw, there's not much she could do about that. Jennifer's going to ignore it. And try to utilize that center guard and make a good one here with Caitlin. an officer a great scrub the entire way sneak it by the guard okay. well they Finds sneak the floor, it but yeah over the curls Kathy, yeah right? it does wow good weight good brushing they had to go hard to get it by <laughs> nice weight kale great brushing there is no lack of energy effort from this front end by team manitoba got to get a bye but then it does come into the open But one of the things that we look at is the magic of the middle. So often we just look at the skips, but take a look at Nova Scotia and why they're demonstrating that they're here to play. 11th, 11th for both, the second and the third for Nova Scotia. Some great numbers for Manitoba, plus three, plus one. They're in first and second amongst the stats. This says that the second and the thirds really, really need to play well for Nova Scotia this morning to put pressure on Jennifer Jones. And so far they are doing just that. Kathy, what are the plus three and the plus one? What does that mean? Well, what they do is they look at your percentages head-to-head -head against the opponent that you are playing in a given game. And if you score 5% or better, you get a plus. So in the case of Jill's, I think we saw that she was a plus three. So coming into this game three times, she has outshot her opponent. And so it really is a great stat, in my opinion, because if you shoot 90%, but the person that you're playing against shoots 100 well, that's not good enough. So it's not about the number. It's about what you're doing against the person directly opposite to you. Almost like match play in golf. You go head yes. to head with that other player. Hey, God, 
like the other turn. Can I have a look here? Yeah, we've seen this one on other shows. Doesn't like it from the hack, coming back down. I think still here. Okay. Jaw's not terrible either. Huh? Jaw's not terrible. Uh, I don't like it. Probably looks better from yeah. the hack. Yeah. Like, should have steady movement based on the machines. Okay. Yeah. An update for you now on this Tuesday morning as we look at Yukon Northwest Territories and Quebec. Of course, we'd mentioned a few times Yukon Territories with some illness actually playing with three players. And Quebec coming in, Marie-France LaRouche with a two and three record, her final stone. Well, for Marie-France, she's got a draw to the eight foot. Actually, even full 12 will do it for the deuce. A lot of pressure on Sharon Cormier moving up to skip. Shona Barber moving up to third. And most importantly out here, that look at the advantage of having two sweepers. Well done for two. Ten a pair for Quebec and a 2-1 advantage after two. Yeah, you gotta go. Hard. Hard. Back in our feature game, Heather smith AC got out of the hack, took a look, and won't like this result as she jams. And there you see Manitoba, the door open now to get her pair. Soft? Yeah. Sorry. It's soft. Okay. A little soft. A little, I think. It's moving. Yeah. It's still fresh. Yeah. I'm taking another couple of room heads of ice. Well, she could have for sure. Her initial call was to play the straighter Police. turn. Okay. I think her fear was that it just floor. might hang out because okay. sometimes it does. So she makes that roll, but we just can't go out the other side. Yeah. Okay. Just sweep for the full eight. Yeah. Let's go. Speed's all good. Yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Chance for Jennifer to find draw weight. We're, we're full eight. Heavy. Nine only. Heavy. heavy. Top four. Full four. Clean it. Nine. Line's great. We're T-line. Triangle it's trying a little. Great. Can you Line's clean it? Better. Yeah. Higher the better. Whoa. Oh, the floor. Over curling. Right the floor. No, As we watch the, the stone from Jennifer Jones here settle, trying Higher to get behind that guard. We look in at PEI and Newfoundland and Labrador. PEI, the red stones. You see one there on the button, a yellow stone behind. And the final one now on the way from Heather Strong out of the... Valley Halley Golf and Curling Club in St. John's. Now her degree of difficulty on the two shots we've seen has been huge, Brian. She's trying to play the in off her own to get to the forefoot, but just racks on that guard. Crashes on the guard, they'll take a look. It looks to be possibly yellow for one, but we'll let them decide for us. One red, says Rebecca Jean McDonald. So that is a steal. And if that's the case, then a two nothing advantage for PEI as Kim Dolan continues to play very well here back at the Scotties again. Like it. Now the last thing that Jennifer said to her team when she sat in the hack is, I just can't come out the other side. And come out the other side is exactly what she did. She took more ice, but that huge swoop this morning means there is the opportunity here for Heather smith Dacey for the double. Smith Dacey saying it's close. Rushers on it. They get by the guard. Spill the one. Nice shot. Spill the two. Great double takeout from Nova Scotia. As the bronze medalist from last year gets her team out of some trouble. Somebody sweep that. She looked a little shaky coming out of the hack. You'll see that little bit of elbows and things going, but fought, <laughs> fought herself back. <laughs> like us fighting at the patch, Kathy. <laughs> get out of my way. Elbows flying. But a great result. Nice shot. Nicely done. Well, that's a huge save. Great brushing to get that by. They almost touch the guard. If they do, it is a draw for Jennifer for three. Instead, it's the attempted blank. Well, we saw in one Heather Smith Dacey attempting the blank. It did not go as planned. Now it's Jennifer Jones' turn to try to retain the hammer. And she is perfect. 
So once again, after quite a few rocks in play, we have a blank and a one thing advantage for Nova Scotia after two. There's a look at the bronze medalist from last year, Scotties, and what a shot she made last end, Kathy. Well, she really did. She changed up the turn on the first one and unfortunately jammed, but has a chance to get back here. Fights with a little bit of a shaky delivery, but these are the shots that I talked earlier about. She throws big weight really, really well. She's accurate, ices herself well, and makes the big double. That goes from a three spot for Jennifer to a, a blank. And a key shot is brought to you by Scotty's Facial Tissue. Stylish designs for any room. And Jennifer Jones with the blank in two. Retains that hammer. It is Nova Scotia with a 1-0 lead with action underway here in three. Lead stones for Nova Scotia from Terry Lake. And I had a chance to chat with Terry briefly after their 0-3 start. And obviously a little bit disappointed. Sure. But I said on the flip side, well, so you can only go 8-3. That's not so bad. And they talked about it, and the one thing that her team is is very positive, and they came out with two great wins yesterday, and they seem to have that spark back in their step. You do very much need to remind yourself that it is a long week. There are 11 games that you will play, and you can lose three in a row, but then you have to stop the bleeding and find a way to bounce back. They did that last night. Go on need to keep the momentum and they also need to do the kinds of things they're doing this morning that middle section that we compared earlier the seconds and the thirds making the shots up the middle they've done that so far this morning Whoa, 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 whoa. Very nice, Don. Great job. Good. Michelle Inglot back of the Scotties for Team Saskatchewan out of the Tartan Curling Club in Regina. She comes in with a 3-2 and two record. Yellow Stones for Saskatchewan this morning facing New Brunswick and her final one in two. Well, she's got a shot for two. Pretty wide open. Comes down to that red stone. Nice quiet weight makes the tap, and there is two. So they are tied up after two ends of play. Wide open. Looking for easy weight from Jill. Looking for Hack to bumper. Jill will hit and stick around, and I know you talked about it, how she missed a lot of time I with this team, but early on in the interviews before oh, the competition wait. began, she did say that felt like she never left because Jill was their biggest fan, a lot of emails, texting, and really kept in touch with the team and gave a lot of support, and now she's back supporting her team with great shots like this. Well, if it's a long-time player. There's no need to develop new relationships with the team. It's very comfortable. Okay. Back 12, she's saying, okay. Did yeah. you get here, Dawn? Yeah, it's normal. normal? Okay. Jennifer looking for back 12, wants to make sure that where Jill leaves this doesn't allow Nova Scotia a hit and roll behind their stone and the guard. If it's deep, even if it rolls, back 12 is back not going 12. to be a concern. It's all there. Deep as it can go. Yeah, right. Let's go. Careful. Line's good. It's not curling, really. Careful, it's not curling. Yeah, whoa, 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 guys. Whoa. Back 12. She'll let a baby girl camera. Curling now. Deep as it can go. A couple of months ago, said so she's a great sleeper whoa, through the careful. night, careful. so that okay, so obviously go, go, go. really helps. Go, 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 go. Nice hair, Jill. Good. Hi, girl. Well done. Hi, girl. <laughs> well, it's better than 
Daniel Parsons. Her first stone here in three. Jennifer will take a good look to see if she even needs to hit that stone, whether it's in fact shot. It does appear that it might be. Back Playing eight. the draw down, if she touches it back at all, it would be two for Manitoba. I think just all good. Same as this. Manitoba lying one and two there. And we've seen a lot of Jets fans in the crowd. Well, we have Trade Center 2012. We got you covered Monday. It all begins with James Duffy and the crew at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Of course, those Winnipeg Jets right now tied Ooh. for eighth in the Eastern Conference with the Maple Leafs. Another Jets fan. Woo! Double so woo! Easy over there. <laughs> easy over there. You can watch it, obviously, also on TSN Mobile TV. But interesting to see which teams will make a move of course mm -hmm. a lot of talk about brian burke as well and will the jets make the playoffs in their first season back Woo! got my vote we're supposed to be impartial yeah, broadcasters up here kathy <laughs> <laughs> really gotta go really gotta go well it is no, the no, second no. best no. ice court for sure oh, dear Frustrating mistake there for Parsons, and now Manitoba really in control of this end and a chance to get two and maybe more. Lighter, but should, be, should be close. Yeah, it should be close. Like it's jamming, isn't it? Uh, Straight it's jam. Pretty close. Yeah, I can still see your broom. I think, I think I let's like play that. this. Yeah. Ten. Well, they had the discussion. Any play on the top stone jams it directly on that one that is right behind it because all you can see is about a third. And so to hit a piece of it, you're going to get rid of one stone. No. But you're going to roll away into the twelve foot. There's a live look on sheet A, PEI, Newfoundland, and Labrador. And the final stone on the way from Heather Strong here. She has one counter, it looks like, fighting the eight foot, and this appears to be a drop for two. Sure does, and by far the easiest shot that Heather has had this game. We've seen her trying to play runs and picks. And so finally a chance for two. And now a team effort on the brush, and they will guide it in just enough. So there is two for Newfoundland, Labrador, and a 2 2 tie. After three. Yep. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, they're hitting oh, a look and yes, roll off yes. the back stone. Makes a hit, got a roll and get behind some cover. But it remains wide open, back four. So close. So close. Yeah. Hey, 
again. So. Well, it's wide open. Jennifer would love to roll towards the 12 foot. Would actually love it to be third early. shot. Yeah. Okay. Rather roll out than sit yeah, there. I so agree. there you go. Lose the shooter, Manitoba still Heavy. lying too. Maybe a little, it wasn't bad, I didn't think. Sorry. Well, it's a tough okay. call. They're calling it on and off all the way because they it's definitely like do not want to stick right there. They'd love to stop right there. Here to make the shot. Yeah, but you're just making one go away way further than I thought. Oh. So you to let it go. Yeah. Early, yeah, no, you were right, sorry. No, that's okay. I didn't think we would hurt, be hurting ourselves. Oh my goodness. And now the question is, does Heather Smith AC have another double in her arsenal? It's pretty tough, Brian. She can get rid of one, but look at how much you can see. It's, it's almost a natural that that top yellow one goes directly onto the second one. So it is at this point about eliminating or, or reducing stones. Probably had more of the other one just from my perspective. And as you always yeah, say, it's one thing to look yep. down there, but when you sit in the hack and then you actually see what you have to work with, it's a pretty tough shot. That. She's probably got more on the outturn side. They're just not as comfortable with the ice. Worst case scenario, though, for Nova Scotia, remove one of those yellow stones, and at the very least, you're facing two. You have hammer back, and you're yeah. down by one. Final stone here for Nova Scotia. Yeah. Here in three without hammer. Oh, yes! Four! Just sneak it by the guard, and what do you know? That's a great shot, Brian. That is really, really tough. Back to back doubles for Heather Smith Dacey, and once again gets herself out of a jam. That is a great shot, great brushing. Not a lot of room. She has squeaked Someone two guards on two doubles today. Watch how close she gets. There's just a whisper of room. And she answered my question. Lots left in the arsenal still with a great shot. So it will be a throw through. So another blank as Manitoba heaves it through the rings. Jennifer Jones keeps the hammer. Some great shot making here in Red here this morning. Want to win a two-year lease on a 2012 Ford Focus S? You can log on to FordHotshots.Curling.ca and test your online curling skills. And for every participant at this year's Scotties, they also had a chance to win a lease on this 2012 Ford Focus Titanium by testing their on-ice curling skills. The final, a battle of skips. Newfoundland's Heather Strong against Northwest Territories Yukon's Terry Galusha. And thanks to shots like this, the hit and stick right to the button. Galusha is your winner, winning a two-year lease on a 2012 Ford Focus Titanium. Don't forget to log on to FordHotshots.Curling.ca for your chance to win. And just like Terry Galusha, you too could drive away in a brand new Ford. Unfortunately, the hot shot not feeling so well as Kerry Galusha and the Yukon Northwest Territories actually under the weather. It's actually Sharon Cormier skipping over a sheet from our feature matchup, which you see right here. And what a display of double making from Heather Smith Dacey as she gets out of a jam yet again and back to back ends, forcing it another blank. So it is one nothing Nova Scotia, fourth end underway, Manitoba with hammer and Kathy. What a performance she's putting on thus far. She truly has a double in one, two, and three. But in that last end, unlike the first two, her middle section really let her down. Both Bliss and Danielle not making the intended shots. You can't Nine count hits. on Heather to continue to make yeah. the doubles. And for Jennifer Jones and her team, they must be starting to think, what do we need to do? Had a chance to lie three. Jennifer rolls out, and then you get that great double.
Don Askin trying to get by her own corner guard. Spills it into the rings. Kathy, off the top, you talked about the game plan. And for the game plan for Nova Scotia, it was putting that broom in the yes. right place. I'm assuming A-plus so far marks for Heather smith Daisy. No question about it, a big A-plus, because one of the challenges early on, she had the opportunity to beat Saskatchewan by coming through a hole with up weight, just popped it out, had a little bit too much ice. She's iced herself much better for her big weight shots. Jill Officer runs the red, gets a piece, and a nice double from the Manitoba second. Let's play here. Heather Smith Dacey knows that Jennifer has got those two stones there to utilize. And this one is close enough to the house. And so she's looking for the hit and the roll into the ring. Jennifer looking for the roll Real behind that ball. corner guard just yeah. beat by Team Nova Scotia. Just the nose is good. Ten. That stone is not in, but it is in such a dangerous position, not only in front of the house, but by that corner guard. And so this is one of those shots that Nova Scotia is very happy with if they're able to stick it. Because then they will have that stone in the control zone and be able to utilize it. Little down. 10-5. Whoa. 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 Daniel yep. Parsons. Yep. Removes the yellow, loses the shooter. You know, Kathy, you brought up a great point earlier in the week about these teams on the East Coast and how they have to battle. And you tell a great story about how coach and husband to Heather, Mark Dacey, has really helped this team get prepared. Oh, he's such a great player. And that's one of the things that he brings to the team is because he has won before at a national level. He knows the kinds of things that you need to do. And in his journey to win Canada. One of the things that he did is that because he couldn't travel everywhere, he did what he did for the girls this year, which was to make phone calls to teams like Kathy Overton Clapham, who had spent a lot of time out west, did scouting reports on the teams that are here that they've not played. They looked at percentages. And they also talked to people like Mark Kennedy and Eve Muirhead about these stones because they've utilized them before. And stone selection is really, really important. Doesn't mean that you go with everything they say, but you kind of feel like you're out of the shoot a little bit earlier if you have some of that intel. Quick, quick over here. And you mentioned Eve Muirhead, a great player at a young age already, and we will see here her in Lethbridge, Alberta, as she yes. is qualified for the Women's Worlds. Now that starts a great field. And whoever comes out of here will no doubt carry Canada's colors well, but it will be tough for sure. Watch oh. where? Uh, back eight. Back 12. That's being optimistic. <laughs> Very honest, Terry Lake. This one may go right through. What was that? 93. Yeah, 90. It's the line because it'll probably curl up a yeah. little more. 
Second in a row, in a row, Manitoba has an opportunity to put some pressure against Nova Scotia. Caitlin drawing to lie two. Line game. We can go. You got room. I'm good. Copy. Go. No, top one. Line. Line. It's got lots. Yeah, line two. Line. Yep. line only. Line only. Line only. Line only. Line only. Line Lots of line. Oh, lots of line. Top four. Two oh. lines. Oh, no, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. That one settles right on the Yellowstone. If we know one thing early on, Kathy, that this lady has the potential to make some great bailout shots. Oh, we know that she's great at big weight. This is the first and her team in trouble makes the double. One end later, again in top. They get it by the guard, makes the great double. And again, the next end in one, two, and three now. She's been asked to make some tough shots, made double, double, double. Three great bailo shots for her team, and I'll tell you what, if we were playing for money in pool, I don't think I'd be coming anywhere close to her. She's fantastic. because that last one of Caitlin, they felt they misjudged a little bit, took it back too deep. Allows the corner freeze, but keeping in mind she's made some great doubles. Now it's to really shift gears and find draw weight. Lay Comstock have scrubbed the entire way. Got to get it to those yellow stones. They're by the guard, but really need to drag it a little bit farther and will not get there. 22. Okay. No, no lack of effort right out of her hand that they, they knew that they had to go heads right over the broom heads brushing hard and it does carry very very well first thing in the morning just under thrown a bit I do you want that four okay. I don't mind being in the forefoot like just biting the four even just outside just close to the forefoot okay. Should be good across the middle. I think yeah, should so. Be close, yeah. That gate's okay. Okay. Thanks. Jennifer Jones, her first here in four. A chance to lie three. Go, 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 go. Go! Hard, Go, 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 go. Keep her going. More, 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 more. Good spot. Good brushing, guys. Good job. Good shot, then. A little soft on you. I was kicking out too hard. Nice shot. I don't know if she can she get, I don't think she can. I guess she can get shot, eh? Just have to tap it out here, though. Make sure I release it. Now. A great sweeping by Manitoba to make bit sure that now. stone was back as far as it was. Anything higher, you can see that any hit and roll would have gone right into that pocket of two yellow stones. Okay. Going to see if she can get a little bit of a roll. There's that red guard out front. You can see that if she rolls, she'll still be shot. Maybe partially buried. Final stone here in four for Heather Smith Dacey. She's been under the gun pretty much every time she's been in the hack thus far. Makes the hit, a little roll behind cover, but it rolls too far. And now, an opportunity for three for Jennifer Jones. Oh, good throw. They just left it too late. Oh. 
you don't think it was heavier going across? I don't think no, that no. felt good. Yeah. Too. Yeah, it's normal. Sorry, I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> Go, Jen. Smith AC bailed out her team a few times here in back-to-back -back ends, but now finally a chance for a breakthrough here. Jennifer Jones, final stone in four. Just needs to touch a piece of eight for her three. And mission accomplished for Jennifer Jones as Manitoba finally Strikes blood okay, here then. with a three spot. 3-1 three after four. Yeah, nice pair tail. The Yukon Northwest Territories being skipped by Sharon Cormier this morning. Illness going through the team. They're actually just playing with three players taking on Quebec and Marie-France LaRouche as Team Quebec comes in with a two and three record. Her final stone, Kathy. Well, she's got a really tough shot, but I can see why she's playing it. She's trying to do a run back. If she's able to pick out the red stone belonging to Yukon Northwest Territories, it could be for three. It's Shuffles the deck a little bit. No yeah. kidding. And one yellow there at the back, so she will pick up the single. 3-2 Quebec leads after four. <laughs> Meantime, Michelle Inglot, a great story out of Saskatchewan. Actually, the first skip to win Provincial Scotties in four different decades. She is back here on the national stage. And here, a chance for two with a hit with her final stone. Well, she was certainly known back in the day as Michelle Snyder. And it was the draw. She could put a draw anywhere, anytime, any place. But at this Scotty, she's made a lot of really big hits. Something that a lot of teams haven't been able to do. Sticking around isn't always that easy. But makes no mistake, and this is it. And that's the two. So a 4-4 tie with Team New Brunswick after four. And as for our feature game between Manitoba and Nova Scotia, finally Jennifer Jones able to strike as she picks up three in the fourth end. A 3-1 advantage here. Nova Scotia has the hammer with action underway in five. Well, and you almost felt, Brian, that it was just a matter of time. Heather smith Daisy, we showed you those great doubles in one two and three you cannot keep making those all the time okay, there's sorry, always Carrie. been lots of yellow granite in the house and sooner or later it's going to work for you and it certainly did for jennifer in the fourth all right so that's probably better i think go here go. 10 yeah Got jelly. About half to three quarters of the stone visible hack. from the hat. Solid hat. Yeah, it looks like a lot of weight. Whoa. Hack. No. Last motion out, so it will take a long time to that's get back to the middle. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of weight. Now that's a little bit more than hack for sure. It's on its own to the bumper. Okay. Early on, Heather Smith AC not getting a lot of help right now. Well, and Jennifer starts to gain momentum. As somebody who played with her and who played against her, you just do not want to give her the opening to start to feel that momentum. Very, very dangerous. Nice peel from Jill Officer. Would you say that this Manitoba team, Kathy, is one of the tougher teams to come back against when you're in a bit of a deficit? They are for sure. They do a lot of things really, really well, but they're mentally very tough. 
and they're very consistent. One of the biggest things that we've seen this week is almost a roller coaster of teams playing really well in an end yep, and then not hard. playing well and some great shots That's and some misses. When you look at the stats Wait. for lead second and third manitoba at the top or second or third and their numbers don't deviate much from an 80 85 and that is really hard for another team because you're not going to get a lot of zeros out of manitoba that's a nice shot Lucy. good throw jennifer has been the one player on the team that has been doing that little bit of up and down we talked about the 60 percent she's second overall but look at what happened in those losses 67 64 very uncharacteristic and tough to win but in those wins brilliant numbers especially as a skip a challenge for today and we're seeing it on the board as heather smith dacey comes in this game 12th overall at 66 percent and look at those great shots she's had to make to keep her team in it that's good that's good, good shot. and you talk about the numbers jennifer jones having a great game at 89 percent thus far as we watch the replay here nice shot from caitlin laws and heather smith dacey sometimes the numbers just aren't fair we said jen 89 percent and when she plays great usually the team follows <laughs> despite the tough shots that heather's had to make just at 56 percent 56 percent rather well and the horrible part is that for heather smith dacey she's made those great doubles but she called it, so that's a four out of four. Oh, and then unfortunately, when she came nice. short on her draw, that's a zero nice. out of four. So Hard you get to get a 50% pretty easily, even though she's made hard. some big tough shots. And that's why Jennifer's numbers really nice. in the 89, 90, 91 that we just it. showed you are just so, so good. Push, 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 push. Yep, yep, keep it going. Really great sweep, you guys. Okay. Sweeping, you guys. Okay. I don't mind trying to get them all going, okay? Firm. Well brushed. They've worked hard already this morning. You really feel like you're making a difference first thing in the morning. The ice is so crisp, you can see how far you're dragging the stone. I'll bet if you asked them out of the hack if they could have got it that far, they might not have been sure. Well done. Whoa. Girl. Good. Great Good girl. shot. So Jennifer wanted. She wanted everything gone. Had a girl. Just blank. It's taken a while to come over, but it gets there. Kathy, your take on young Caitlin Laws. Last year, obviously a rookie, came in though, made some great shots and. She just seems like a really solid player for somebody her age. She's a very, very good player, and she's also got the kind of personality that is very, very even. And so you're not going to see her running up and down and yelling and screaming, but she's a very calm influence. If she makes the shot, you don't see a much different expression than if she misses the shot. Keeps the balance. And that stone does hang on back 12. Jennifer already down at the other end. Wanting to make sure they've got lots of time later. Just roll out of play. Shoot. So the the almost, end, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're going to stick it. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I should have. No, I know. I thought they were going to stick it. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Stay nice with you. Hey. Yeah. 
Smith DC not giving up on the potential to score two here in five. We'll try to utilize that stone that just rolled out of the house but still is in play. Line's good. Line's good. Thrown by Jennifer Jones. Lock it on. Line's good. Line's great, guys. Yep. Hard. Hard, 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 hard. Gotta go. Hard, you guys. Go, go, hard. Go, 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 go. Wow. Hard to get it in. Curled a lot more. What? Curled a lot more. Oh, the weight is coming off. Yeah. Yeah. Our splits are so different. They have trouble yeah. reading them. They didn't pound it out of your hand, though, so I thought it was okay. What's that? They didn't pound it. No, so I, it well, was... they, they, I gave them what they wanted. It's just a difference. Why well, not have been good? I know, it's perfect. So now Jennifer Jones wanting to make that red stone go away. I guess there is the slight possibility of that jam back there. Oh. Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nine and a half. No, Nine and a half. No, no, no. For sure, for sure. You can clean it. No. Okay, that's fine, Jen. That's fine, Jen. Perfect shot from Jennifer Jones. And now another blank on the way. Jennifer yeah. would have liked to yeah. have stuck around just to make this shot a little bit tougher for Heather Smith Daisy, but four. not particularly. Like throw. Yeah, that was a better throw. Yeah. If I had a 10, it would have been fine. I, whatever. Oh, yeah. It doesn't really matter. Sure. Make it go away. Yeah. Green. My draft felt like a really good weight. Is that a 10, my three? I got a team. six. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that raw. Interesting comment from Heather. She doesn't like the rock. It's the first one that she threw short in four and just bit in five. So you can expect that they'll move stones around and talk about that with Mark at the fifth end break. Yes. So we had a blank in two, blank in three, and now a blank in five as Nova Scotia will play catch up. Back to Red here after this. 2012 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by M&M Meat Shops. Hundreds of meal ideas, one aisle. Welcome back to Red Deer. They'll be having a discussion about that stone for sure. Heather Smith Daisy not liking it. Came short in four, came short in five. Mark will have some views yeah. on that for sure. But let's take a look at the numbers after five. It's brought to you by Tim Hortons. It's time for Tim's. Well, we talked a lot in the beginning about the big middle. That's the second and the thirds. Danielle and Bliss at 53 and 68. That's brought the total numbers down for Nova Scotia. Some huge numbers for Team Manitoba this morning. Jennifer at 86. The middle, both players at 90. That's huge. And Caitlin Laws is with Brian. Kathy, thank you very much. Uh, Caitlin, Heather Smith, Daisy made some outstanding doubles early on in the game, but you guys seemed to have the momentum. Did you think it was just a matter of time before you broke through for a good end? Patience is really huge in this game, and we've kind of had some good ends set up, but Heather's been making a lot of great shots, so we kind of hoped that we would get our chances, and we were fortunate enough the one end to get it. Your first Scotties, you go all the way to the final last year. What has the experience been like from last year to this year now for you, Caitlin? They've both been amazing. I mean, my first Scotties was incredible, and the fact that we got to the final was quite something for us especially being a new team and now we're back and we're excited to play again and finally you feel you have momentum going into the second half of the match here oh, well you never know it's a, it's a long game but right now we're we have a little bit of control so hopefully we can keep it up for the last five congrats on the game and uh, those commercials and your dancing moves pretty solid stuff oh, thank you <laughs> you're welcome good luck <laughs> thank you that's Caitlin Laws of Team Manitoba as Manitoba has a 3-1 lead over Nova Scotia through five. We'll be back to Red Deer right after this. <laughs> the 2012 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? By Ford, official automotive partner of the Canadian Curling Association. And by World Financial Group, proud to be a sponsor of the Season of Champions. Your dreams, our strategies. A busy Tuesday morning here at the NMAX Centrum. Let's get you up to date right now. Yukon Northwest Territories taking on it. Team Quebec. Now it's been a tough morning for the territories. 
they've had the flu go through their team, and that means Sharon Cormier is actually skipping the team. That also means they're only playing with three players, so just one sweeper. And a hit, and a stick, and success, as they will hit around and get that single. So one point for the Yukon Northwest Territories over Quebec. They are tied up at three after five. Meantime on sheet A, it is PEI facing Newfoundland and Labrador. A bunch of rocks in the house there. One is counting on the button, and that rock belongs to Kim Dolan of PEI. Her final stone here, Kathy, playing a pretty tough little in-off to try and get two. She sure is. It's the only way, though. Needs to score the port, get through, and come off her own. This is basically a must-win game for Heather Strong. And it'll just be the single, as it's not to be. So a 4-3 advantage for Newfoundland and Labrador. They come in with a 1-4 record. PEI comes in at 2-3. And, and over on sheet B, New Brunswick now skipped with a new look team. And throwing the final stones, of course, longtime skip Andrea Kelly. Now it is Atkinson who holds the broom as Rebecca will call the weights. And she's drawing against uh, two here, Kathy. Well, she is, and she needs to make a really precise shot. Needs to get to the piece of the heart for shot. There you see Rebecca Atkinson in the house, the front end, being urged on by Andrea. And what nice touch weight. Kelly actually 90% on her draws thus far this morning and that was a big one up against a pair of yellow stones so 5-4 New Brunswick after five so you're up to date across all the sheets of ice here this morning at the NMAX Centrium 3-1 Manitoba leading Nova Scotia in our feature game we've had three blanks so far including the fifth so it is Heather Smith AC with the hammer here with action underway in six Nova Scotia throwing the red stones Shot. Does manage to get that roll, yeah. but three quarters. Yeah. Most of Go it's here. open, and so Jennifer doesn't care where it goes as much as getting it out of play. There would have been discussions at that fifth end break for sure by Mark Dacey. As you look at the great numbers from Jill about the need to yeah. play better from beginning to end. Whoa. Discussion no. about weight. Heather did no, not no, like no, the first no. rock that she was throwing. Right out. Okay. Right out. Well, there are rocks in play that can be utilized by Nova Scotia to try to generate two. And even though there's been a lot of yellow granite in the house, it is only a two-point edge for Team Manitoba. So lots of time left. They close the line, yep. Sorry, Bliss. Okay. Nice throw, Bliss. No, I just peel it out. Probably just a peel. Straight peel. Once again, Jill Officer, that big weight thread, a nice play. One of the best in the business at removing those stones. Trying to replace that corner guard. Three, three on its own. I think just let it die. Might go in. It's in for sure. Yeah. Just let it die. Freeze this? No, uh, no it's not that far back. back. Okay. All right. It's okay. Right on the nose. Okay. Be careful. Be 
Canton. And eat! Right at her. Caitlin Laws, her second time at the Scotties. Was kind enough to let me tease her a little bit about the commercials that are currently running right now. Right her helping teach off. the young kids how to curl. Right off, right off. He's looking for the double, okay. gets one, but jams on the Manitoba stones. Well, at least we're gripping them. The first stone that she did hit was the number eight stone. That was the one that Heather was concerned about. That's the eight stone. That's the one that she threw know, two draws, here. came up short, and just did up. not like it. Typically, yeah. you can give it to the second just because in throwing be hits, you don't tend to see double. any discrepancies okay, in weight. Just touch it. Kathy, you talk a lot about scouting other teams. Well, a lot of these players like to scout the rocks out as well, and I believe these are the ones that were used at the 2010 Vancouver Winter Olympics. It is a huge, huge part of the game, and it is a skill set that I would say maybe arguably people don't have as much as they should. It is one of those things that coaches really do a great job of. Someone like Mark Dacey, with all of his experience, would be great at that. Uh, they will have binoculars in the crowd. They'll have spotters for them. They'll be watching what teams throw, what order, what rotation. And it is just extra information because don't okay, forget as we get to the weekend and the really hard, big me. games, Hard. It get becomes choices for Hard, teams of rock selection Hard, and you really want to choose stones that you feel really comfortable with and that you know what they will do. And that doesn't mean that they're matched. Yeah. It just means that you know what they will do. Sometimes at your local curling club, you'll get in the hack and if you're a lead, well, you grab the one, two stone and away Got you it. go and you fire them off. For but sure. at this level, it doesn't matter. You can throw the eight stone and the two stone if you're the second. It really doesn't matter, does it? No, you can throw and, and you know, you could do that at club curling too, although the person that has those stones might have an issue with you. <laughs> but it really is about trying to match the stones. And because they're one, two, three, four, there's a great example Whoa. of Caitlin throwing the four stone. Well, typically you would think the third would throw five and six, but the intel on the sheet says that this is one of the better stones and it's matched with whatever number that Caitlin is throwing. And to that fact, Kathy, if you're in a position where you're going to play a lot of hits more often than not and you have a stone that maybe isn't drawing as well as you'd like, then... It's kind of a no-brainer to make sure you use that stone to throw your hits more often than not, is it not? You do, and the other thing is that you usually give it to the second because the seconds by percentage throw the most hits. And you definitely want to get rid of it before your third throws. Well, with that jam by Caitlin, opportunity knocks for Nova Scotia. They've got second shot in the house. They've got a guard up front that they can utilize. That is the call. It's better. Line's nice. Line's nice. Line's nice. Room. Room. Whoa. Room. Whoa. No. Room. See? Here it comes. Line's nice. Whoa. Yep. Now. Yep. Now. All hard. together. Yep. 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 Whoa. Yep. Yep. Whoa. 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 Beauty, Danielle. And that rock is absolutely buried. Top four. Nice Good one, sleeping, guys. They nice have, have a lot Thanks. of patience and wait. That was due. They wanted to sweep, but it really didn't need <laughs> it, Brian. It, you know, even if it stops right there, it's a lovely shot. Does oh, not geez. need to be full four foot. It just needs to be buried. Okay. Top four. Okay. Speed's good here at a 15 on her. Yeah, I think it's good. Jennifer trying to come down. Corner freeze the top of it, reduce the scoring area. There's those solid numbers from Jennifer. Good bounce back from last night.
and Nova later. Scotia still Back shot stone. Line. Yeah, sorry, we should have just stayed on it. Yeah. We were on and off for way, but I think we did pretty good. Well, Jill's oh, beating herself up a little bit, and I can't agree with her really in this think. case. Yeah. They're going for weight. That is ideal weight. You are asked to judge to bring the stone. There's another example of a five stone being thrown by Jennifer, not a seven eight. Can we just come back and tap it then? It's like the person tap? in the house that is calling you for line. So Caitlin needs to let them know to go earlier or later. Okay. I'd like to play draw weight at it. Okay, then. There's the space between the stones. Great job of bringing it right to it, but because it overcurled, it does leave so much of that forefoot open to Heather Smith-Dacey. Go Smith back to that back one. Okay. Planning to sit on that back one. That would give them, it should, second shot. If she's able to do this. Just raise the back one. Okay. You can move it a little bit. Okay. Live look now over on Sheet C between the Yukon Northwest Territories and Team Quebec. Both teams coming in with two and three records. Final stone for Marie-France LaRouche. There are two red stones in the house, and so for Marie-France, needs to hit and stick. And she does that, so there is a single for Quebec, a 4-3 advantage. We should mention, too, that a bit of a flu bug going through Team Yukon Northwest Territories. Sharon Cormier has been actually skipping that team this morning, and they've only been playing with three players as well, so just one sweeper on the ice. Yep, line as Kerry Galusha is one of those players not feeling up the potential. Wendy, Wendy Miller also to back it. at the room. We wish you both speedy recovery. Yep. To it. Yep. Hard to it. Going. Yep, yep, yep. Good shot. That's what nice she calls. Lies one and two. Nice shot, thanks. I had to triple check that we were going to be one to yeah. that. Maybe force them. It's close, eh? It's really close. Right on the nose. Probably cross it a hair, if anything. Okay. Okay. Jennifer playing to hit it right on the nose. Could throw really big weight right and try to nose. pick it out, okay. but that okay. just okay. allows. The team from Nova Scotia, the access to the forefoot for the draw for two. Would like to nose it if she's able to do so. Would likely force Nova Scotia to the signal. Jennifer Jones, Team Manitoba, has really carried most of the momentum so far in this Tuesday morning match. Heather Smith Acey's made some fantastic doubles to keep her team close. Now, final stone here in six for Jennifer Jones without hammer. Bangs the red stone. She does now sit shot rock. There's a chance for three here. Lost it's it. Easier. I think so. Yeah. You might have to throw some weight at it, though. Just normal. Can't roll off, that's all. No, I know. You think three, Kathy, or well, just the two? Because you know, three would be a really tough so shot. If you take a look at the top and the bottom, it does appear that red at the back that's would be normal, third shot. So if you play just back 12 weight and you tap that stone sideways, there may be a potential for three, but they're not looking at that. She's looking at playing the hit and stick for the sure deuce. The huge two points it would be. Well, considering the shots Ten she's out. had to make so far this Ten morning, cool. yep. this one pretty cut and dry. Final stone, Heather right. smith Dacey hit it on the nose. Wait. Girl. Girl. Makes the hit, spills the shooter, though, and will just get the single. That is a lot of weight for a nose hit. Yep. So Nova Scotia pulls within one, but it is Manitoba with Hammer when we return.
They are the Skips going head-to-head -head in our feature game this morning. Heather Smith-Dacy and Jennifer Jones of Team Manitoba. But as we flash back, they have a lot of history as they played against each other back in the day as well. Jill Staub, now Thurston, was taking on Heather Smith. In a junior final, extra end, Thurston goes a little bit too far with the draw. And heartache for that team. And also on that team, a young Jennifer Jones. And a young Kevin McKenzie. Now, obviously, a former BC champion. And if you look at the roots of the juniors, and wow, talk about a legacy and how they develop. And you look at the names here. These are players that have skipped their own team. Past Canadian junior champions. It's a pretty amazing list, and I believe 20 or so athletes have competed at one time in the event as well. So it's pretty amazing, Kathy, and just speaks volumes to where the game has come from and the development as well. Well, and what I love most about it is that we have sort of flipped over a trend that was you got to a certain point after juniors and you just quit playing and you didn't come back. These players have continued to play and I love the game yeah, today and that yeah. is the best part of the story is that they're still playing and if you're just joining us in the sixth end it was heather smith they see a chance actually to pick up two and she just got the single so now it is three two manitoba here in seven with action underway manitoba with a hammer back and there's a live look at sheet a pei newfoundland and labrador final stone here on the way for heather strong playing the yellow stones and it looks to be here, Kathy. What is she playing? A tap on the red to try to come in? Well, I think she's trying to get just around that guard really tight. She's already lying one, needs to get to the forefoot. So it might be like a little bit of a rub and roll. There's that red stone. She'll tap it a bit. And it looks to be Enough for two, I think. a two spot. Heather Smith, yes. Dacia, Nova Scotia last end. Not surprised Whoa. at the call, but I am surprised with the amount of weight she threw, Brian. She could have thrown just a, okay. nice a bumperish kind of weight. Something that I think uh, we see a lot more at the men's championship. We don't see as much big weight unless it's needed. A lot more quiet control so that you stick around. Something that I think Carrie Galusha has done really, really well here this week. She's not thrown big, big weight. She's thrown the kind of weight that you need to move stones, get them out of play, but to stick the shooter. Oh, easy, and that was easy. really important Whoa. for Heather on her last Whoa. one. But rolled out. Clean. Yep. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yep. 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 A little bit, Don. No, it's on the nose. Maybe a little bit. Okay. And there it is. As promised, it was indeed two after we figured it out. And 6-3 now, the advantage. And that is pretty much... I mean, there's still a lot of time left, but when you talk about the records coming in for Heather Strong and Team Newfoundland and Labrador coming in at one and four, they really need to start putting a bit of a winning streak together. No, 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 no. No. Danielle, go, 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 really good percentages across the board third overall is a team so they're making a lot of shots it's the timing of when they're not making them or what teams are doing against them so it is uh, that is an example of a team that is much better than their record yep, yep. hard really hard really hard still trying to get by the guard hard really hard hard laws and askin unable to hold that stone it was good, eh? yeah. And we can't really see the angle yet, but the news doesn't get much better because it looks now that Nova Scotia is lying one and two if indeed that top red stone is in the ring. Looks to be.
trying to guard their stone in the forefoot. arguable Brian that top one it's tough to say it is tough to say whether this. it's in or not just yeah. back eight it's okay as long as that stone is touching any part of that black outer ring it would be viewed as in but lots of rocks to go before they're going to worry about that able to get to the face of that stone and tap it back but you can see that almost seven eighths of it is huh? open so looking just for that similar kind of weight maybe a little bit more than just thrown by Caitlin That stone is removed, and now Nova Scotia sits two, maybe three. A live look on sheet B now. New Brunswick, Redstone, Saskatchewan, the yellow. From our vantage point, it looks like one for sure. Saskatchewan has one, and I believe Michelle Inglot's going to play the tap on her own yellow and possibly sit for three. Saskatchewan, yes. New Brunswick, right. both with three and two records. Meantime, Caitlin Laws in our feature match. Her final stone of the seventh end on the way. Laws plays the little tap. Michelle Inglot makes the tap and looks to be three. Nice touch. If indeed it is three, oh, I think it is for it'll sure. be a two-point advantage and a 7-5 lead after six as they look it over. Had a lot of discussion. Lana will say three. So a close matchup on sheet B continues. Both teams three and two. Now this is a little bit trickier than the first one. That bit of an inside roll. Probably like an 80 split here. Yeah. Just like Danielle's was. Remember a couple of times? Yeah. A little over more, but I think that should be close. Yeah, I agree. Well, that jam brings the deuce back into play here for Jennifer. Here we're all done. Okay, let's go, Jen. Okay, grab it. Let's go, Jen. Trying to hit and roll behind that center Ten. guard. That would leave two buried okay. for Manitoba. Jennifer Jones, her first here in seven.
she hits. And a little flip behind that guard. Not totally buried, but a good chunk of it as we now check other scores from around this Tuesday morning on sheet A. Newfoundland Labrador has mentioned getting that two spot. They lead now 6-3 over PEI. Basically a must situation when it comes to a win for Heather Strong. And then the Yukon Northwest Territories up 5-4 on Quebec. And of course an interesting story there as Sharon Cormier has stepped in to skip the team just playing with three players as a bit of the flu bug is going through not only their team but a number of the players at the Scotties. Same speed. Going for the back one first or the top no, one? No, we're going for shot rock here. Going for shot rock. Come around, around everything. Around the top yellow? Everything, yeah. Back four. We heard the explanation, really important. One of our players, it was hard to discern who was asking if they were taking it to the back one. That's a guaranteed two then for Jennifer Jones. Heather's playing to steal one. Looking to be shot. Where? Back. back. Where? To the back. Now, suggestion early that she's no. got a lot of weight. They have not put a brush to it as this one is coasting. Caitlin Laws puts the brush down, tries to get it past that yellow stone. She will. And now a big opening for Manitoba. Well, she hasn't scored off in this game, but both times that she's had the chance, it's been for three. And even talking with Caitlin there at the fifth end break, you could just really feel that Manitoba's had the momentum and it was just a matter of time. You give Heather Smith Dacey credit. She made some big shots to keep her team in it. I'm out of it wider, but I think it should be good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Needs full 12. Jennifer Jones, four times Scotty's champ, picked up three in the fourth end. And now with her final stone here in seven, a chance for another three. Lean it then, line's good. Got a girl. As Jill Officer simply walks it in. And there it is, another three spot for Team Manitoba. Nice Former champs rolling here in Red Deer. make a great traffic police officer you know <laughs> directing things that's awesome though what a great character heather nedowin kelly scott our next game at 3 30 p.m eastern time now sherry fraser's actually played the last couple of games sasha carter's been under the weather you were saying kelly hasn't been feeling well as as well so hopefully the flu bug will go away here in red deer anyways 3 30 p.m eastern time Yes, it would really be nice if it disappeared. Players work so hard, so long to get here, and then you find yourself in that position that you are unable to play. And sometimes it's a mistake to try too hard to play. You've got a fifth, you want to use them, but in the case of Yukon Northwest Territories, this morning their fifth went down with a flu too. And Heather smith AC not feeling great either, but has nothing to do with the flu. No. She is down 6-2 here to Team Manitoba yeah, I mean, no as Jennifer Jones picked up three and now a big point. hole to climb out of here down by four with Hammer taking on the former champs four-time champ at the Scotties here Jennifer Jones who's definitely one of the favorites here as the week progresses well it now becomes a time to manipulate stones not remove them from play tap them back create a bit of a wall at the back of the house something that you could freeze yep. to And while that rock settles in our feature game on sheet A, there you see a yellow stone, a red stone. 
hovering around the button there. Newfoundland Labrador, a 6-3 advantage over PEI. And it is out of the Charlottetown Curling Club, Kim Dolan, Scotty's veteran, her final stone, trying to claw back into this contest. And it's so hard to tell from this angle because this is the away end, but it almost seems as though that red shot in the middle is shot. Hoping to get this on the inside. Still left herself one. If she could have had another rotation, she might have been able to pop it for two. So just the single, a 6-4 advantage for Newfoundland and Labrador. As back. Heather Strong okay. is looking for win number two. Back in our feature matchup, it was Jill Officer playing the peel. And as we talked about, Kathy, off the top of the show, it's been a tough, tough night last night for the seconds. You had Tammy Schneider having a fall, Jill Officer having a fall, Jill Babin having a fall. And for the viewers at home, Kathy Goche did also play second. She had a stumble going to get a bottle of water here during commercial break. She had a fall. So it's tough all around for the seconds here. Even the broadcasters are not immune, Kathy. Uh, this floor is slippery or something. I don't know if we have a Skype. We can throw that up somewhere. But, Kathy, that was fantastic. You were graceful, though, like a gazelle catching yourself. Or a buffalo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said it, not me. Oh, dear. Thank you for sharing that. Top Anytime. It's my job, actually, <laughs> has a... Almost don't mind running the double and Former friend. <laughs> <laughs> that might be better than the cross, cross the top, eh? Or we just peel this one out or peel this one out. I don't mind that either. Okay. Peel. Or just firm. Jill's fine. Firm. Their concern is you do this, you jam onto your own, and so this is about eliminating only one stone. The inclination usually is try to make everything go Whoa. away, but those two yellow Manitoba stones would act as a catcher to the second red. So one of them goes away. It's okay. Go line to get it going to get it back. Where? Wait's okay. Line's good. Freeze the pocket here. It's gotta work a bit. Whoa, 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 line. Whoa. Just wanna get it down to those two yellow behind the T line. Won't quite See, make it to that pocket. <laughs> my draw back four. And that's just the difference, Brian, of sweeping rock. weight versus throwing it to be there. I thought Eric Monford, one of the ice guys, um, along with Dave Merkling, or the two head ice technicians, gave me the best analogy to share is that when you watch golf and you see the Masters greens, how much they will warp. Well, if you hit the ball a little bit too hard, it's not going to take a swoop. It's not going to follow the same path. Then if you have a little bit less weight, and the same applies on draw weights here. Caitlin. Moves Good. those yellow stones around. Well, for Jennifer, the biggest thing is the less Shut rocks down. in play, the happier she is, and so something's gone. Like this freeze. But there's still Thanks. some stones that Nova Scotia can use. Daniel Parsons, third stones for Nova Scotia out of CFB nice. Halifax. Well, you have room. Well, room. Well, Wait's room. Good. Room. Line's great. Line's really good. Yep. Mop, yep. Room. Yep. Hard. Yep, line. Got to go hard. 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 We've got to get it by this stone. Don't want to set up a double for Manitoba. And they've done just that. Time now, Kathy, to look at the player comparisons as we check out the thirds. Well, some advantage for sure for Caitlin Laws, but the interesting story here is Caitlin comes in with an 85% average, so not playing quite as well as she has, but Danielle Parsons has done a good job today in trying to keep pace with her. 72% average coming in, so she's sort of staying where she's been all week. The key was to try to outshoot your opponent. The plus in this case would go to Caitlin Laws, 
for that 10% difference. It's been a, an on and off morning for Team Nova Scotia. And player comparisons are brought to you by Capital One. What's in your wallet? A little frustration from Caitlin. And again, just that comment, just not as sharp as she usually is. I think we're shot, aren't we? I think you are. Caitlin, of course, one of those former Canadian junior champions that are so in this field. Trying to come down on top of that back one by that stick. It almost acts as a guard. And that's what Nova Scotia will try to do. Get around it and use it as a guard. Okay, got a little more room. Line's good. Line's room, good. more room. Whoa. Whoa. Line's yeah. good. Yeah. Line's yeah. good. Oh, yeah, for line only at the end. We'll just hopefully leave them all. The only other shot is to throw a 10. Yeah. Try to sit everything there, but. I don't mind that either. If, I, if I'm half rock, we're good, though. Yeah, I think we throw firm, eh? Like the inner, the out. Firm, this one still might spin, though. That's the only yeah. thing. Well, it's not going to come back at you, but it'll it keep firms? going. One, Both uh, reds can go. No, I like the out. Should be the last yeah, Thank you. Too. Even if we hit the four first, like the yeah, four first, just make it. Firm, Jen, or what kind of? Yeah. Kathy, when it comes to this spin of the rocks, does it matter in turn, out turn? Does it make a difference? Yeah. It's a it's a sharper really angle. Shot, Often, if you come across the face, she doesn't need to. What she needs to do here is hit that red one to the right of Caitlin's broom, less than a quarter, and that will send that one out. And then the redirect will send yellow one to red, and that one will go out as well. It could leave Manitoba with four stones in the house, which is more than she wants. But what she likes more is the two red gone. And that's why the out turn? Uh, yeah, it's the more natural to play just because if essentially you've got more margin of error. If she hits it in the crotch, both go either way. Oh. Oh. First stone here for Jennifer yeah. Jones in eight. Bangs the reds, and there they go. And now look, Manitoba lying four. Good shot, good call. Knew she had to hit about a quarter or less of that top red one that will come into play on the left. Just yeah. enough to redirect it. Loves those shots she does. She makes it. I still Perfect. got that whack. Slash yeah. Or even sit Just top four, I don't freeze. know. She's got nothing for two. Yeah. Force is fine. Hmm. I mean, I just threw mine heavy. It's the chess game. game. Here's where she's going to go. They always assume that the opposing player is going to make it. They start to think through what they will do to counteract that. Are the angle on those two yellow stones, the one in the four and the one in the top eight, they don't really set up that great for Jennifer, though. Is there a chance for two, or is Jennifer right? There's no chance for Heather oh. to get her deuce. Shoot, there's always a chance for two. For Heather smith Daisy, if she can make a great draw, the problem for Team Nova Scotia is because of how close those yellow stones are to the forefoot, there'll be some kind of an angle run. Got to sneak it by that yellow stone and they will nod a little rub. Her weight was great. Yeah. Perfect. Got it. I think this should run. I agree. Getting straighter. Kathy, in your opinion, then on that last stone, is it is Heather struggling with where to put the broom, or is the ice changing, or what are your thoughts on it? If anything, the ice is getting a little bit straighter in the center path. You just heard Jennifer refer to that. Probably just as we talked about in the beginning of the show, putting the broom in the right spot, believing that it will really move. Like as long as we're edge to edge. I agree. Yeah. She's got a really hard shot, so. Let's go.
They did not hesitate. Ask an officer right out of Jennifer Jones's hand. They sneak it by, remove the red stone, and now it is Nova Scotia drawing against four. Okay. Sorry, Kate. That's okay. I thought that would run better, so it was a little soft. Just a little soft, yeah. Just didn't want to set it. No worries. Rats. It's good for What she's referring to there is she didn't want to set it, so she didn't want to put it well, back good. against the broom, and that's Same the way. thought in her mind. Instead of just aiming at the target and throwing, when that thought process goes through your mind about not putting back, it is a tendency then to help it a little bit. So when she says soft, meaning she didn't dump it, but she just let it go so that it's starting to move towards the intended target, which is why they swept it all the way. Line's good. Line's okay, better. Water pad here. Well, gotta go. Line's all good. You. Line's nice. Line's perfect. Bite the button. Oh, whoa, whoa. Needs the button for her one. And Heather Smith Dacey comes through against four yellow rocks to pick up her single. 6 3, Manitoba. And Jennifer Jones now has the hammer. It's time now for the m, &M Meat Shop's Final End Challenge. After the game, go to www.finalend.ca. Enter the secret word for a chance to win a trip for two to see the 2013 World Junior Curling Championship in Sochi, Russia, home of the 2014 Olympic Winter Games. The first 100 entries will have a chance to win a $50 M&M gift card. All participants will get an M&M discount, and we will give you the secret word a little bit later in the broadcast. And we can get this to you right now, an update over on Sheet B between Team Saskatchewan and Team New Brunswick. Both teams coming in with three and two records. Andrea Kelly throwing final stones for Team New Brunswick. New look to this team, Rebecca Atkinson. Whoa. Trying to just chip that shot stone sideways to bring in their back one for the potential two. Is it too thin? Only one. So a single for Rebecca Atkinson and her team from the Gage Golf and Curling Club in Ormocto 7-6. Saskatchewan still leading that one. Now over to Sheet C. The Yukon Northwest Territories facing Team Quebec. There you see the red stones in the house belonging to the territories. Sharon Cormier skipping this team today. They're shorthanded as well, just with three players. A bit of a flu bug going through the team. Final stone here for Marie France LaRouche. Well, and Carrie Galouche has got to feel proud as she's back in a room that her team seems to be holding it together. Mighty Files facing three here. As Marie France, the last time that she was at the Scotties in Red Deer, made it all the way to the final and lost to Colleen Jones. Well, she gets the single there. 5-5 five, five after eight in a close matchup. As we bring you back now to our feature matchup here at the NMAX Centrium. And it has basically been all Jennifer Jones. A three spot in four, another three in seven, and now a six three advantage with Hammer. And also we have a lineup change as well for Team Manitoba as Don Askin is out of the game now. And there's a look at Don. And coming into the game is their fifth, Jennifer Clark Ruir. And this isn't a case of the flu bug for Dawn leaving the game. Four teams to be eligible for the jewelry, the beautiful jewelry that Kruger provides to these winners. They have to play in a couple of games. They don't say how many ends you have to play, but you have to be a participant in them. And so what we often see is that when teams are up dramatically or they are down dramatically, they will bring in their fifth player so that they have the opportunity, should they arise, to collect on the jewelry as well. And Kathy, here. briefly, maybe just a comment on what a great effort from the Yukon Northwest Territories. I don't know in your time when you played if you ever had to play 
just with three players, but at this level, when it comes to the brushing, to have just one sweeper and the fact they're holding their own in this game, can you maybe just talk about the impact of that? Well, it's huge, especially on ice with this much swing and that is this keen. You rely on your brusher so much. We keep showing the changes that different teams have done and how effective brushing is. So when you're down to one, you're down to one brusher. You're also down to one person that is making the judgment of whether it is light or heavy or where it is. And so there is a lot more pressure. Add that to the fact that in the, in the case of Yukon Northwest Territories this morning, they're skipped, their leader's gone from the game and there's a shuffle in the lineup. These are big things. And to go back to what uh, yes. Team Canada coach Murph Bonger talked about last night, the teams need to be better at is working on the mental skills so that you are prepared to deal with these sort of things because they really are inevitable. Great shot there from Jill Officer. Yep. Gets the double, they're pretty tight, staggered, but for Jill, the ability to throw big weight and for Jennifer to call the line to hit one really thin produces a great outcome. Two. Two. Yep. It's a little slow. Nova Scotia needs to steal Finish. here. Cross. And so the fact that there are rocks it's in fine, the house fine. are not a concern to Heather smith Dacey. It's about throwing guards, right. trying to get something up front. And Jennifer wants no part That's of that. Bliss. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that a little less. <laughs> just clean, just clean, clean. Nice pair jump. Oh, look at that little cutie. Just a reminder, the Oscars. Billy Crystal returns to host the 84th Academy Awards ceremony Sunday on CTV. And maybe that'll be more interesting <laughs> for that little cutie than the curling at this point. Kind of fitting, though, as so many of these athletes have had babies or become new mothers and then have come back to play. Jill Officer, of course, being one of them. As Caitlin Laws prepares to remove the scar, Kathy, did you find yourself in a situation ever with just three players? No, I, you know, when you said that, I was uh, running through the Rolodex in my head, and no, I'm trying to even remember if we used the fifth. We were very fortunate in the Good years of the Scotties and the worlds that, that people were healthy. And it is, it is such a plus, and it's num something that you just can't prepare for. It. If you have a cold, you play, you suck it up. But if, it, you're, but if you've got a really bad right. flu, you can hurt the team, and sometimes you're just not Back physically button. able to play. Now, now you start to use the stones in the 8-foot and the 4-foot as guards. They are corner locked, so if you get around there, it's tough to remove. have a peek now at the game story well for manitoba jennifer jones they only scored twice this entire game but they got threes both times combination of some good shots by manitoba and some skips and some blips from team nova scotia and at the skip level we've talked about when jennifer has won high 80s 90s she's back there today and for heather smith Daisy came in at 66 her numbers still not very good today but in fairness okay. to heather the degree of difficulty of some of her shots has been pretty high Got that one back game story brought to you by m&m meat shops 
hundreds of meal ideas, one aisle. Heather will as well try to utilize those two stones as a guard and get behind into the forefoot. Okay, back button. Okay, tuck it around. Can we get the touch slower on this side? Or slow down a bit on with the curl? Okay. It's a three point five. difference. If you're able to steal well, one here, you three. just yeah, never know. But that was the four she had on her second one. Oh, right, yeah. She just, she's just not getting the glide on her rocks today. I think I can throw what I've been throwing. Same as down here, okay? Heather Smith Dacey down by three without hammer here in nine desperately Woo! trying to set something up for a steal. And as Heather Stone enters the rings, a live look now on sheet B, New Brunswick, Saskatchewan. Heather Smith Dacey Stone actually goes right through the rings. New Brunswick, the red stone, Saskatchewan, the yellow. Mm -hmm. And it looks to be, is it two counters at this point, Kathy? It is. And that is a look at Michelle Anglot. Coming in with a great record. She's been playing really well, three and two. New Brunswick also three and two. Last stone on the way here in eight. Well, she had a couple of options. She could have just drawn to the forefoot, elected instead to hit that stone. And it would be for three. So a 10-6 advantage and the low high fives for her teammates. As she is certainly a great story coming back to the Scotties. And there it is, actually handshakes. So a victory for Team Saskatchewan. And she improves to 4-2. and two. Michelle Anglot out of the Tartan Curling Club in Regina. And of course, a bit of a sad story. The last time she was at the Scotties, her father passing away on the eve of the event. And she's very grateful to be back and having another chance here in Red Deer. Jennifer Jones makes that redstone go away. And we'll take an updated look now at the standings quickly. So BC, Team Canada, four and one. And now Saskatchewan has four wins. Their record four and two, and New Brunswick dropping to three and three. Rebecca Atkinson now, of course, calling the game. Andrew Kelly still firing the four stones for New Brunswick. Jennifer picked out that top stone. She would not have been the least bit disappointed if that one behind it that is in the forefoot went away as well. That's the only thing that can be utilized by Heather Smith Dacey, but you can see that any sort of attempt to be shot would be a pretty simple removal for Jennifer. She'll be able to tap that stone sideways or just back. Wait's better. More line. Line's good. Still lots. Okay. Line's good. Final stone here for Heather Smith Dacey without hammer. And a little bit deep, and now it looks to be a draw for two. It is. They've done what they have set out to do so far today. The recovery from last night's frustration. Can we come to it. Yeah. Okay. Was able to park that. Jen got her numbers back up to where she needed them to be, where she consistently is when the team is winning. We talked about the offensive machine, the number of points that they can put up on the board. 
So final stone here for Jennifer Jones, the four-time Scotty's champion. Has basically been in cruise control for most of the match on this Tuesday morning. Officer Clark Ruir guided in easily. And there is a two spot for Team Manitoba. And handshakes as well. As Jennifer Jones, Team Manitoba improving to four and two. And after rattling off two straight wins, Heather Smith Dacey, Nova Scotia, now dropping to two and four. Eight three the final there for Manitoba. Another update for you. Now you see four teams with four wins. BC, Team Canada, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. New Brunswick dropping to three and three. And of course, action still underway here. At the NMAX Centrium. All smiles for Team Manitoba. More from Red here after this. Well, you don't want to get anything. <laughs> well, just a reminder, go to www.finalend.ca. You enter the secret word for a chance to win a trip for two to see the 2013 World Junior Curling Championship in Sochi, Russia, home of the 2014 Olympic Winter Games. And the word, the secret word, is mate. And hay is for horses. <laughs> So if you're just joining us in our feature game, it was Manitoba beating Nova Scotia, final score 8-3, and now we're going to move over to sheet C. It is Quebec leading the Yukon Northwest Territories, 7-5, as you see Quebec stealing two in nine, a two-point advantage as they come home in 10. There is a look at the house. As you see, it is Quebec, the Yellowstones, Yukon Northwest Territories, the Redstones, both teams coming in with two and three records. Now we should mention off the top, Kerry Galusha, the skip, and the fifth, Wendy Miller, are both six. So the Yukon Northwest Territories the entire morning have been playing just with three players as Sharon Cormier moves up to skip. Shona Barba, Megan Cormier also playing. And this is really, Kathy, a unique situation because with three players, you have just one sweeper, plus the way the rocks are thrown, also different. Well, of course, because you're down to just three players. And so what happens is that your lead or your first thrower, in this case, Megan, would throw three stones. And then Shona would throw three stones. The skip never, ever gets to throw more than two. And so for these Wait, women this morning, room. they've been throwing That's three and then sweeping three. Room. And in some yeah. case, like Megan, yeah. she's sweeping five by herself. So in a sense, is that better for your percentages? 92%, not too bad. You're throwing more stones. Do you know what? It's a, it is a very interesting thing. In terms of throwing, you could easily argue that it is better because if you are throwing draws, you have a better chance to get a feel for the ice. In terms of sweeping and outcome, there's no one that would argue one sweeper is better. You really always would love to have two. You're stronger, you're more effective together. And there's a real communication link that's missed when you only Just have three easy. because you're not sharing up, information with each other. Up. Last in, Sharon had a really ah. difficult shot. Quebec lay two buried in the Wait. forefoot, wasn't able to get to it. And that's that steal oh. on the edge for Quebec. Wait. Up okay. two as we head home. Amelie Blais, second stones for Team Quebec. Yep. Yep. Whoa, whoa. Uh, Maddie Flounce will try to whoa. remove that stone just thrown, try to open things up a little bit, make some stones whoa. go away. Okay. Spills one red. And the jam was there for sure. But she gets rid of one. Okay, and this is a tough again. spot too for Sharon. Okay. It's not only throwing last rock, it's calling the game. She's so used to doing that with Carrie, and now she's kind of out there by herself. Shona, usually the second stone on this team, will have thrown one second stone and two third stones. And it really is the complexity of third that is the difference of second. You just, your shots are more difficult, more finesse weight, and this just overthrown. Brenda Nichols coming down to discuss. Options. Ouais, ça, si tu fais ça, t'enlèves tout, il n'y a plus rien ou à peu près pas, on va avoir le freeze là-dessus. 
Elle est plus du... ben, je suis pas sûre qu'elle est plus dure vraiment que, que de faire le nez là-dessus. Non, je pense que c'est plus facile. Oui, je pense que oui aussi. Mais on va pas rebondir là. On s'en fout, même que ça s'en ira tout, c'est parfait. Là, si tu sors okay. tout. Euh... Mais c'est mince, mettons, si je joue par exemple, c'est pas bien bon. Hein? Ben, je veux dire, oh, tout sera plus lourd, puis. Okay. Normal, moi, je pense. Okay. T'aimes-tu mieux aller pire? Non. Mais je suis aller pire, mais je suis pas là. Ouais. So to finish talking, one of the concerns that Marie-France had is if you open up the front, you make those two go away, then you expose that shot stone. She can play the freeze because they know that Sharon Cormier and the Yukon Northwest Territories team needs to score two. The concern, Brenda said, was, you know, if I hit on the nose, I make the double off our own. But you don't want to have those negative thoughts. It really is about removing the front. You may get some great action down and move that stone in the house as well. Brenda Nichols, of course, experienced skipping at this yes. level as well. Her fourth trip to the Scotties, joining Marie France LaRouche yes. this year on her team. Yes. 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 That's what go, they go, talked go, go, go. about. They're hoping that it would go. And everything goes except that yellow stone. I'm sorry, wave a little frustrated, but it's really tough. She Hits this one really well. They knew it would come back. Just hope to hit maybe only half of it and that it might disappear. Those are tough to call. Brenda, also a new mom, had a baby boy, Jesse. She mentioned it uh, was going to be really tough this week. It's the first time she'll be away from him for a long period of time competing. Well, and she had Jesse in three days difference. Marie France had Justin. No, no, Two little no. boys no. on this Hi. team now. Feel. Corner guard goes up. And for Quebec now, just trying to eliminate mm -hmm. as many rocks as possible. Run them out. Emily Blay, Anne Marie Filizzo, the rookie front end on the brush. Their first trips to the Scotties. Good job. Meantime, there you see Sharon with the broom has some experience as well skipping. Of course, she was in Sault Ste. Marie, leading the Yukon Northwest Territories. Yep. And she's been to the show a lot of times, asking Shona for one more corner guard. Sharon showing a lot of patience, but definitely good. needs to score two to tie. Planning That's on good. doing that yeah, on her own over. two good. stones. Have to ask uh, Megan if she gets a pay upgrade for all the sweeping by herself uh, this morning. Did I call Yes. Yeah. Sorry, on my first time. Marie-France going down, going to remove that stone. She knows that Sharon will be playing a freeze against her stone in the house and will worry about picking that one out once the shot is made. But for now, make this corner go away. Kathy, I hate to pose this question, but heaven forbid if another member happened to be hurt on the ice of Yukon Northwest Territories and you're down to two players, do you have to forfeit the game? You would have to. You cannot play with two. Mr. Cooey couldn't yeah, come in and throw a few. <laughs> well, there's a couple of <laughs> couple of problems with Fred joining us. Ooh, ballet! Oh, go, Mr. Cooey! ballet. No, not the pretty, so kicked out a little bit too hard <laughs> there, but <laughs> great, <laughs> great recovery. Years and years ago, when I learned from Connie and Janet. Talk about it. Laliberti's mom, the first thing that she taught us all in competitive yeah. curling is that there will be times you come out of the hack and you are not stable and you're falling down. Just never give up. Still try to find a way to get that rock to the target. And a very good job by Money France. And Kathy, you've also learned that translates into the broadcast booth as well. Very much. <laughs> good fall down, get out of the chair, out. onto you. the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> oh, dear.
Line's good. Needs to curl. This is where Sharon has to call all the line because hard, Shona has come hard, out to hard, help hard, Sweet. Hard, 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 hard. Right up, right up. Hard, 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 hard. Trying to drag it for shot stone, and they will. What Some a great, great sweeping. Shot. Just three of them, but great teamwork together. It's a fabulous shot. Now, as you watch the sweeping, Kathy, you know, usually the skip or the person calling the game, the rule is you can't start sweeping before it crosses the hog line. Is that the correct rule, or is that more of a sportsmanship thing? Um, you mean the opposing team, the non-delivering team? Like in this case, your team can all jump up and sweep if you want to. So you can sweep with as many players your own rock, no oh, matter sure. where it is on the ice? Oh, sure. Sharon could have jumped in to play along, too, if she wanted okay. to. Okay. It's not recommended. <laughs> so for Muddy Fowls, just yeah, wants yeah, to pick yeah. this stone out, but it's tough. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Clean, clean. Nicely yeah. done. And Marie-France LaRouche makes that stone go away. And a valiant effort this morning from Yukon Northwest Territories as they make the joke about shaking hands. Don't want to get any other players sick, but a valiant effort from Sharon Cormier, Shona Barber, Megan Cormier, and we wish Carrie and of course Wendy all the best if they're watching. Feel better soon. 7-5 the final for Team Quebec. Oh my God. <laughs> that brings us to the updated standings here on this Tuesday morning in Red Deer, British Columbia. Team Canada, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, all now with four wins. New Brunswick falling to three and three. Quebec improving to three and three. And then you have a bunch of teams with two wins, Newfoundland Labrador at one and four currently. And speaking of Newfoundland and Labrador, we can update you here. In the 10th end, there's a look at Kim Dolan. the shot just made taps that stone in team from PEI trailing by three needs to find a, a way to score three to tie still a few rocks remaining from that game as now coach Jamie Korab comes out to discuss some strategy okay let's do it okay let's do it Heather Keeping in mind, there's a three-point difference. So PEI has one rock left, needs to score three. Pretty tough to split any of those stones in. So probably Jamie's advice would have been throw it yeah, in the house. Foot, put it in the forefoot. The Keep most the she can score is two. Heather Strong and her team coming in with a one and four record. Kim Dolan, PEI, comes in at two and three. Line's good. Go all the way. Okay, go then. Newfoundland go Labrador. Go. Line's great. With a steal in four of two. Let's go, guys. Come on, you can oh. do this. And now all hands on deck for brushing. Oh, guys. Oh, Keep it moving, guys. Keep it moving. Oh, Gotta go. Keep it moving. Gotta go. Great job. Great job, guys. Good sweep. And they'll drag it into the button. Some great brushing. Catch that. You wait into there. You're not spinning that one, right? You can call time out if you want. But Now, my math isn't the greatest, Kathy, but I see they're down by no, three, and I'm that, not seeing a not ton of stones they can to use here. That in, right? No. no. Well, I don't think it's a uh, time it's out being thin. called here for PEI to kick that one. Well, I, well, that's what I was wondering, but I don't think it's thin enough. Like you got to hit it there. Yeah. Yeah. Daryl Newell, the coach. And see, then this one here is going by that one on the board side. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll try it. 
So, Kathy, basically they're hoping to try and spin one of those red stones in while making you a miraculous have to throw it with peel, don't you? double. That's what I think. Yeah, you need to throw a fair amount of weight. Yeah. yeah. You want to hit it really right. thin. Let's just. I just think it. if you throw peel, you might you might get lucky, but yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> they don't have a lot. They are down three, and so this is one of those things that you it's might as well man. try. You've got nothing to lose, so you got to make that shot for sure. And you're hoping that your shooter is going to clip this on the way by, and maybe it comes in as well. It is what you would call a very long shot, but there is absolutely no risk in throwing this shot, and you might as well. The first thing that came to mind for me was the Briar in Calgary and Glenn Howard ah, taking yes. on Saskatchewan. And it was Richard Hart looking at a shot, and they said it was there, and it was pretty miraculous. Yep. We'll see what can happen here. Does Kim Dolan have a little bit of magic Ooh, left? Final oh, stone oh, here in 10, needing okay. a bit of a miracle. And it's not to be. Okay. Thank you. And now it's officially over, and handshakes between these two. Veteran skips oh, yeah. good game, good game, good game. as okay. Heather Strong, okay. Newfoundland Labrador, okay. improves to <laughs> two and four, <laughs> and PEI <laughs> e. dropping to two and four. Yeah. Eight four, the final. We'll have much more Scotty's action great, great, great and wrap things up from Red Gear after this. The 2012 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Scotty's. Proud supporter of women's curling for over 30 years. The 2012 Scotty's Tournament of Hearts is brought to you by Ford, official automotive partner of the Canadian Curling Association. By M&M Meat Shops, hundreds of meal ideas, one aisle. And by Tim Horton's new lattes made with premium espresso. So after our action, after Tuesday morning here at the NMAX Centrium in Red Gear, we have four teams with four wins. BC at 4-1, and one, Team Canada at 4-1, and one, Saskatchewan with a win, they're at 4-2, and two, Manitoba 4-2, and two, and New Brunswick, Quebec with three wins apiece and lots to come this week. And speaking of coming up, well, this is the next matchup we have on TSN. It is Heather Nedewin, one of former World Junior title in this city before she's at two and three taking on kelly scott a former champ by her own right in the world's four and one record and as for this morning's action the chess match continued and she's one of the best in the business as jennifer jones and team manitoba continue to roll at the scotties on behalf of all of us at tsn thanks for watching and we'll see you this afternoon with more action from red deer